Hey guys, how's it going? Brad Riley here and welcome to another episode of Success Student Saturday. And in this one today, we have an interview with one of my Entrepreneur Accelerator Mastermind students, Nana. Now, this story is crazy. I'm not going to ruin it too much. I can't wait for you to watch this. Um, but ultimately, Nana's story is pretty crazy. Now, Nana's been actually starting and trying to land clients for his agency all the way back from 2017. He's taken it really seriously though since 2019, but nothing had worked. Anyway, fast forward, after two weeks of finding out about me and joining the Entrepreneur Accelerator Mastermind. Bear in mind he hadn't had clients or any success for years. After two weeks of finding me, joining the Mastermind program, having my guidance, having my help, he's been able to land his first client and then since then land two additional clients. So he's now sitting at three clients, making a pretty decent full-time income, running an agency full-time. He's also actually kind of stepping up a notch now. His recent client is not just taking a retainer, but a percentage of profit from the ads as well. And the guy's absolutely killing it. But the story is amazing because obviously since joining the Entrepreneur Accelerator, he's been able to go from having no success, no luck, nothing working for him for three years to now after finding me within two weeks landing his first client and now working with over three clients. So make sure you watch to the end. He's got some really valuable stuff to share with you here today. Now obviously if you are interested in learning the exact same things that Nana did, I want to invite you to check out the Entrepreneur Accelerator Mastermind. Link is in the description. You get full personal access to me, access to all the training resources and a bunch of other benefits. So I highly recommend recommend you check that out. Again, the link is in the description. Without further ado, I really hope you enjoy this interview. Hey guys, how's it going? Brad Riley here and welcome to another episode of Success Students Saturday. And in this one today, I have one of my students, Nana here. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, man. Thank you very much, Riley, for having me. It's a privilege and an honor to be on. You're very welcome, bro. Thank so uh, yeah, I'm really excited to share your story here today. I'm going to let you discuss it here in just a second, but just a heads up for everybody watching. Uh, Nana's actually a student of the Entrepreneur Accelerator Mastermind. And in the last couple of months, he's been able to go from having zero clients now to the point where you're working full time with your agency for three clients. But your story is a lot more interested than that because you've had a lot of success recently, but obviously there was several years before that where you didn't really have any success. So if you can, just obviously tell everybody just briefly about yourself, a little bit about your story, where you were before and how you've kind of got to, to where you are today. Sure. Thanks, Bradley. So my story is a very interesting one because I actually was one of the early adopters to discover SMMA mm -hmm. back in 2017. And I had discovered an advert for someone who was promoting like an SMMA course. And then I paid for the course, but I didn't get any clients. I'd done door to door. I think back then door to door was popular. I'd done a few yeah. cold calls, but nothing really worked out. So I kind of fell off a bit and I just, you know, decided maybe this is not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. And after 2017, all the way up into 2019, um, I had dabbled in it a bit between, but then 2019, I said, okay, I'm going to go into it properly. Mm -hmm. So I actually quit my job in May, 2019. Um, so May 31st, 2019 was my last day at work. Um, I remember the emotions of it, like thinking to myself, I don't have any clients. I'm quitting my work. I've got a wife and two kids, twins. Mm -hmm. But I just decided nine to five isn't for me. So I was ready. I was pumped. So throughout June, I was doing cold calls. But, you know, the gatekeepers can be a bit mean. So it kind of crushes of you. <laughs> yeah. And so that didn't work out. But I stayed at it. But you know, throughout May, ju sorry, June, 2019, all the way up until December, nothing was really happening. So I said, mm -hmm. you know what, let me regroup. Let me work on my mindset. Done a bit of that from January, February. I've really just doubled down with my mindset, mm -hmm. tried to make the most of that. And in March, I discovered um, the Entrepreneur Accelerator. I had no clients as of yet. All I had done was trials, you know, mm -hmm. close calls. Um, so eventually I signed up to the because it was like super cheap I'm, and I'm seeing people <laughs> saying, I've got my first client with Brad. I got my first client with Brad and that was enough for me. You know, mm -hmm. it, it would be wrong of me not to join in with that price it would have been mm -hmm. silly. I mean, with where, with the sacrifice I had already made. So I just mm -hmm. said, okay, I'm going to join it. Um, and within two weeks, you know, I was joining the sessions and everything like that. I was able to sign my first client mm -hmm. and prior to, I mean, prior to signing my first client, I had been inboxing you on the platform that we were messaging and you was responding to me with voice notes. I remember thinking to myself before inboxing you, he's not going to reply because it's like, he's got 250,000 followers on Instagram and he's like mm -hmm. so many subscribers. He's not going to reply, but I just done it anyway. 
to my surprise, <laughs> you replied with like several voice notes. Yeah. Everything I would ask you would reply. And so I used the information you were giving me, but I applied it on a cold platform. I mean, a cold outreach. Mm -hmm. And so eventually I signed uh, my first client, which was a cosmetic dentistry. Mm -hmm. And that was for 1000 per month with 500 ad spend. Mm -hmm. And I remember being emotional with that. Like it worked because I got to a place where I was actually considering going back to full time. Mm -hmm. I mean, back to work. You know, I told my wife, if I don't get a client by the end of the month, I'll go back to full time work. Because mm -hmm. at that time, there was not much money coming in. Sure. But two weeks later, thankfully, I was able to get the first client. And it was the best feeling, the best feeling ever. Uh -huh. And um, after getting the first client, I decided, okay, let me double down. Let me get systems in place, onboarding system, because I saw you had it in the accelerated group. Let me get some mm -hmm. other things in place. Um, so I was able to get some contractors on board and then I, in July, sorry. Yeah. June, which is where yeah. we are at now. I've just been able to get the next two. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a man. really, really exciting part. Yeah. It's huge. And you know, what's even was crazy though, like you said is, I mean, this is something I'd want to touch on a little bit more is yeah. you basically had, you know, you found out about it in 2017, no luck yeah. for two years on and off, I suppose. So you weren't really all in, I suppose, back then as much. Yeah. Um, but then heavily so the last 12 months, nothing. And then, like you said, you, you'd literally given it the full sacrifice. Like, I'm going to yeah. quit my job. I'm just going to be obsessed. I'm going to go all in. And yeah. then it's funny, isn't it? Like when you have two weeks left until you're like, you know what? I'm, 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 well, you give yourself a month, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. go back to work in a month. And then after two weeks, you, you get your first <laughs> client. And then within a couple of months of that, again, you've got two more clients. And now you're earning pretty yeah, big for full-time income here you know and yeah. like able to run your agency full-time and i can relate to that so much like you said it's like when you're emotional right when you close that first client it's like when you're so obsessed yeah. and desperate almost like desperate right to just be like yeah. i can't work a nine to five I, I hate what i'm doing like i just need to make this work like when you get that first client it's like a it's a real special moment so um I, I think th i think that's amazing i think it's motivational for a lot of people but what you touched yeah. on there which is what i want to pick your brain on a little bit more was you said a lot of that was mindset you, know, you did a lot of yeah. mindset training so obviously you know outreach is important all of those things are important and you've been doing those but you said your slight edge has really been the mindset so if you can elaborate a little bit more what you mean by that what exactly you were doing i think that can be beneficial to the people watching today sure so i would 100 percent say mindset is um, the majority of, of what you need to work on because mm -hmm. for me, I had the strategies like prior to, you know, doing the warm outreach, I had been doing the cold calls, mm -hmm. but I would notice, you know, the gatekeepers can be really harsh. They can <laughs> put the phone down or they can just say something harsh and it would crush me. And not only that, I would also be kind of subconsciously thinking, I'm not the sort of person who can be making 2K from mm -hmm. a social media market agency. I'm not the sort of yeah. person who can be making 3K or what, even 1K. So that was like an underlying thought process. Mm -hmm. So when I realized that, it took a long time to realize it, to be honest, because I was mm -hmm. so strategy inclined and strategy focused that I didn't really think of that. Mm -hmm. But after, you know, going through YouTube videos and just listening to people saying mindset, 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 initially you think it's fluffy, you know, just show me the real stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But of course, then yeah. I got to a point where I said, I need to do something. I started working on my mindset. So I just stopped outreach completely. Literally, I said, I'm going to start reading books. I'm going to start visualizing. I'm going to start meditating. I'm going to start doing affirmations, you know, speaking things like I am wealthy. I am a money magnet to deal with underlying thought processes of poverty, you could say. Mm -hmm. And um, reading books like Psycho Cybernetics, which is really dealing with um, taking myself where I am in my mind and bring, basically bringing myself to Nana 2.0. Course, yeah. <laughs> the improved version and uh -huh. that begins with a lot of visualization and dealing with you know affirmations and how i mm -hmm. see myself mm -hmm. and so that really really contributed to me being able to sign my first client and sign the next two as well i think that mm -hmm. that was immense like saying it to someone who's been at it they wouldn't really get it course, and i yeah. understand because i've been in those shoes mm -hmm. you know but it's really <laughs> a massive percentage of what you need to work on to be able to deal with that because it's sometimes self-sabotaging. Even if you do get a, a, a sales call, for some reason, something subconscious, it may be your vibe, you're just going to push them back. Yeah. You may say all the right things, but it's just going to push them back. Mm -hmm. But once you've dealt with that, visualization and stuff like that, and affirmations and reading and developing yourself, personal development, mm -hmm. you do become a magnet for like success, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you need to be the person that attracts that, right? Like not, like you said, exactly. that you were self-sabotaging yourself and you, you 
obviously you weren't meaning to do that but like yeah. subconsciously your subconscious was and you were act, you know like you said maybe it was certain things that you were doing or the way that you were acting but maybe at that point you weren't the person that almost like deserve to get that because you needed to level exactly. yourself up before you could actually, you know, uh, you know, acquire those clients. But, um, you know, it's crazy. You mentioned to me just before we started this interview here, like a couple of weeks before you landed your first client, like you were celebrating landing your first client before <laughs> you got it. Right. And then obviously within a couple of weeks, you'd landed that client. Some people yeah. would that and be like, Oh, this is fluffy. Like what are you doing? But it, you know, it, it's not though, because you've attracted that. And like I said to you before, your subconscious doesn't under, understand the difference between what is real and what isn't. So if you're sitting there like, you know, like celebrating that you've got your first client, your subconscious doesn't understand that you haven't. And that's yeah. almost becoming an agency owner to your sub, sub, uh, subconscious, which is really powerful. Precisely. And I remember even before getting my first client, I decided to trick my subconscious because I had read that there was an experiment with basketball play. I mean, people who were shooting hoops, one group were actually physically training, another group were just visualizing it. And both of them, there was only like a 1% difference when they actually done the test. So it shows that the mind can't tell between what's real and what's, what, what's not. Mm -hmm. So I would actually tr trick my subconscious. I would celebrate. Yes, I got my first client. Mm -hmm. That was like around a week and a half before actually signing the first client. Yeah. And it, it, it worked because like <laughs> I was able to get the first client. Now, one thing you did say, I want to stress on as well, is that you said getting from, it was in one of your value posts, mm -hmm. getting from zero to one is more difficult than from one to two. Mm -hmm. Now, pe people who are mathematicians may be like, well, how does that add up? But, <laughs> what, <laughs> but what it means is like, it's always harder to get the boat off the, the shore onto mm -hmm. the sea. Mm -hmm. You know, once you've done that, you pick momentum up. And I can exactly. literally see it taking place now where I signed my second client in the middle of celebrating my second client, literally, <laughs> The, the third client comes on board and not mm -hmm. just that it's like, I've got other prospects who are basically bombarding me to, 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 um, to sign up. Mm -hmm. And it's like the man, and the problem now is do I have the manpower? Do I have the resources, which I know I will be able to, because I've been yeah. able to put systems in place, but it's just like now literally you've rolled the, the, the boat off the shore mm -hmm. and then now the boat is going full speed. So exactly. that's really, really contributed a lot. And now in a position where, I mean, it's a first world problem, right? It's like, you know, yeah. all the problems, but you've got the right problem. Exactly. You know, the, yeah. initially you had the wrong problem, which is like, damn it. Like I'm going to have to go back and get a job after 12 months of quitting and making all yeah. these sacrifices to my friends and my family. Like yeah. you had that problem. And now your problem is you've got all these clients. What do you do? You know, <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's a good transition to have for sure. Um, definitely, definitely. But, uh, yeah. So to just like take a little transition here, I think uh, what will be really powerful is what you do to stand out because a big limiting belief, which I suppose is similar to, to the mindset stuff really, but you know, a big limiting belief that people have is, you know, I'm not worthy of that first client or I have no experience. Why would anybody work with me or whatever it may be? Okay. And again, they self-sabotage for that, but you found a way, even though when you go in to get your first second and even now with your third client, because you've got them so close together, like you're still not leveraging any results or anything because you yeah. don't have them yet. Cause it, you know, you've got them all so close together. Yeah. But what you've been able to do is you've been really able to stand out by going the extra mile and delivering value within your outreach. So if you can just elaborate a little bit on that, I think that'll be extremely valuable to, to everybody. Sure. So one of the things that has helped me in getting a good response rate and, you know, clients to actually show, get me on a call, um, is that when I make a proposal, when I sort of pitch, I always go with value because what mm -hmm. I had been doing prior is that it was just about me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. So I switched it up and I decided the majority of my proposal is going to be about their business. And mm -hmm. I kind of grasped that from how to win friends and influence people, which is a book by Dale Carnegie, I believe. Mm -hmm. And in that book, he talks about what's interesting to someone is what's interesting to them, not yeah. what's interesting to you. So I decided that I'm going to focus on their business, focus on what their, their needs are, focus on what their pain points are. And I'm just going to try to add as much value. So for all three clients, it's been the same. I've just value, value, value. And then at the very end, it's like, if you need a hand with this, feel free to get in touch. Mm -hmm. So they respond because I will ask questions. So I'll ask questions about their business. If it's a funnel, if it's a, a pixel, if it's data or a database or anything like that, have you tried this? Have you done this? Is this working for you? Mm -hmm. um, several questions I've got. And they sort of 
naturally seem to come now before mm-hmm. it would have to be scripted but now sure. it's natural I'm, I'm able to just have a, a conversation with them and just write all these questions off mm-hmm. but um but i've noticed by doing that like there was some of one of the responses i've got which is a prospect he sent me because i sent him like a an entire video he his request was for strategy um and for facebook ads and then i said i wouldn't normally do this for free but because i can see how passionate you are about your business give me 48 hours and i'm going to get back to you with as much depth as I can. I put together a Loom video in depth. I mean, asking him questions about his business, presenting some um, strategy and ideas and maybe what he should tweak. Mm -hmm. And then he got back to me with a Loom video. He's got other clients, I mean, other freelancers who have proposed very good freelancers, very good offers, but he seems to be interested in me. I didn't even tell him how much I charge. Mm -hmm. On the video, he said, please let me know how much you charge. Please let me know. And then now I've just said to him, (laughs) I'll get back to you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just want to add more value again yeah. and um, be able to give him a pitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that so powerful, you know, that, that the fact that he's taken the time to send you a loom back. Like, yeah. You know, like, why would they do that? Because they're super interested in you. You know, yeah. it's like, that's the thing. And like you said, you, you mentioned there about um, you know, the, the Dale Carnegie book, but it's like, if you do something for somebody else, they will feel inclined yeah. to do it back to you. Like, or they, they feel like they owe you, right? So you yeah. go through all of this effort and it's, it's, it's like they, the, the, all they feel like obliged to do, they may not sign with you, but they'll at least take a meeting or they feel obliged to at yeah. least respond to you or consider you because you've gone the extra mile on the front end there. Um, Definitely. Which is great. But think, you know, that takes a little bit more time, right? I'm assuming like, obviously you probably can get less volume out because of that, I'm assuming. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the things. So there's less volume, but, with that said, I get a lot of replies. I get a lot of replies with, with them. So, you know, um, you may say, um, normally if I was doing just copy and paste responses, Mm -hmm. I would have got very few replies. I could do days of proposals and get Mm -hmm. like two replies. Yeah. But now it's like every single day, um, I may get two replies Mm -hmm. every single day, two replies. But Mm -hmm. then with that outreach is like between eight and 12 proposals. Mm -hmm. Some replies, don't go on to be meetings. Some replies do. But mm-hmm. with that said, I can see that at least I'm taking the time. So I will t- literally type out so many things and try and I look at the proposal, I mean, the job post and try and think, what are their pain points? What is it that yeah. they need mm-hmm. as opposed to just offering what I want to offer? Yeah. So some of them, they may say something like, I'm a bit too busy. I need someone who can handle this. So in my response, I'm not going to come from the angle of something else. I'm going to come from the angle of, we can take this off your hands. Yeah. As long as we're clear on what you need, mm-hmm. you won't have to worry about this. Mm-hmm. This is what I plan to do. I'll give you initially a strategy call following up with that. I'll come back with some strategy. Um, uh, sorry, a, a discovery call following up with a strategy call from mm-hmm. there. I'll go on to give um, daily updates. So I've got like a communication system that I propose mm-hmm. and I added my proposal, which is daily updates. Oh, sorry. Daily metrics recording on mm-hmm. an Excel sheet. Yeah. Um, daily support on, on Trello or Slack, um, once a week loom video reporting, and then mm-hmm. once a month we'll have a call. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've, I've always pitched when I'm adding it into how I'm going to help their company. For and sure. they, they sort of like one of them, he said to me, I've got two sales, which is my, my client that I signed yesterday. Mm-hmm. He said, I've got two in the initial uh, meeting. He said, I've got two people I want to interview after, but I can just tell you straight away. I really like you and, and I'm going to sign you on. <laughs> so he's just, he's just sort of going to interview them for the sake. And I was a bit worried, like what if he interviews them and likes them, but he yeah. did get back to me. Yeah. I was actually worried. I said, cause I could have signed him for a thousand one hundred plus 5% ROAS. Mm-hmm. But then because he had two interviews, I sort of panicked and I said, you know what? We'll do it for a thousand plus, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. plus 5% ROAS. But then he still said, Oh, we're, we're happy to go ahead. Yeah. And sign on and thanks for the discount. I was going to choose you anyway, but thanks for the discount. Yeah. I've got several other businesses. So if we do well with this, then you can come on board for those as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. And you know, um, what's crazy there as well is I think that works extra well on the front end, but I know it's kind of too early for you to be able to know what your retention is yet, but I guarantee like if you stick up with what you promised, with those expectations right. of the weekly looms, you're going to retain more. And now like, there's an argument to be said where people will often say, you know what, like you need to spend, you need to automate as much as possible. And then, you know, you can focus on scale, which is super important by the way, which I think yeah. you should do. But at the same yeah. time, like if you spend all that effort to get clients and then you just lose them the next month, like what's the yeah. point? So like you, you may, again, you may hit less outreach 
than people. Mm -hmm. You may close less clients within a specific month because again, you're doing less outreach and you have to spend yeah. more time on sending these metrics and reports. But over the long term, you're going to retain those clients for longer. You're going to get more referrals. Like you yeah. said, your clients have other businesses that they'll probably bring on to you. And it's yeah. just a, it's a win-win situation. So, um, I think that's awesome. I think that's one, one of the things that I actually, um, when I, before, when I was building my systems, I was looking at the pain points of, um, not agency owners, but rather clients. What is it that, why is it that some clients sign on and then they, you know, after a month they've gone, yeah. if I can find out that, you know, problem mm -hmm. and try and solve it. So that's yeah. where I got my communication system. So I decided that, cause for example, the company I used to work for when I was in employment, I, I went to visit them the other day and I asked them when I was working here, there was an agency that was doing the Facebook ads. Why is it that you, you got rid of them? And she's one of the owners said it was not that they weren't doing a good job. It's just that they weren't communicating. Mm -hmm. And so we were in the dark, mm -hmm. even though they were getting good results. So I said, it wasn't the results. And she said, yeah. So that sort of sets a trigger that, okay, let me focus. What can I do to get communication in place? So I built a system where anyone I bring on as a contractor, my onboarding video will explain to them, here is the system and the culture of this um, agency. Mm -hmm. Here are the, the communication points that we do. And what you'll be required to do every single time. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they're clear on that. And so every time we, we do get a client, everything's in place, whether it's the competitor analysis Excel sheet, mm -hmm. whether it's the daily recording metric sheet, mm -hmm. everything's there in, in a Google Drive with a link. So they know, here is my checklist. Here's what I have to do every single day or once a week or mm -hmm. once a month. So it's very clear and systemized Amazing. and automated. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. That's, that's amazing. And it's crazy to be speaking like that with that much of a solid system in place for your agency when you're, you've only really been actually having clients for your agency for like a couple of months. Right. Yeah. It's, it's so awesome. But that's another thing where it's like, you know, you took, you decided, you know, what, I'm going to take a little break from outreach. I'm just going to get yeah. all this other stuff sorted. So then yeah. now I can go all out and outreach. And there's no, co there's no coincidence that you close a client yesterday and then you close the last one two weeks before, you know, there's no, yeah. coincidence that it's so close together because now you're able to spend more and more effort on that. Um, yeah, which is amazing. So, okay. So just to touch on another thing as well, I want to speak a little bit about, um, being obsessed as well, because yeah. I think that's something that, um, I relate to you a lot with, you know, you worked in, before you worked at that agency you mentioned before, uh, mm -hmm. you used to work at Sainsbury's just like I used to yeah. work at co-op and yeah. when you're there and it's just like you're stacking shelves and you know, you you know, you, you know, you're destined for more, but you're kind of stuck in this rut. And it's yeah. like, when I was there, I was just so obsessed to start my agency that like nothing would get in the way. And I feel like I'm not saying what, what you did was right for everybody. Of course, isn't, you know, you had savings behind you, you, mm -hmm. you know, your, your partner has a full-time job. So obviously mm -hmm. it could um, help support the family and everything. But what you did was like, you took obsession to the point of like, almost like no returns, right? You're like, you know what? I'm yeah. going to be so obsessed. I'm just going to quit my job and go all in. Yeah. Why was that? Is it just like, you know, was it that pure obsession? Was it just like, you know what? I cannot do this anymore. I cannot work a job anymore. Or what was it for you? I think for me in times past, and I'm, I've changed that now with the mindset thing, but in times past, I've worked well when my back was against the wall. Yeah. So I read a book, um, thinking grow rich mm -hmm. and, um, by Napoleon Hill. And in that book, he's one of the chapters, he speaks something along the line of not verbatim, but something along the line mm -hmm. of burning the bridge or like, I think it was something burning the bridge or burning the boats or something like that, yeah. which is that, there was a group of people who went to war on an island and then the, the leader, the commander burnt the boats. There's no return. So if we don't go and fight the enemy, we're not going back. Like yeah. I'm not saying everyone has to quit their job. I wouldn't want to put anyone in any of position course, yeah. of that. But for me in particular, I knew that I don't want to be doing nine to five mm -hmm. and enter a system and hit maybe 80 years old and then look back and think, what have I done? Mm -hmm. I just decided that I'm going to do what I need to do now. It's better to try than to regret. Yeah. So, so I literally burnt the bridge. I remember hand because I was doing so well at my job. You know, my manager loved me. There was a good like working relationship I had with, with the direct, I mean, the leaders and stuff like that. So they were shocked when I handed in and said, you know, I sat down with them one day. I came in and said, can I have a conversation with you? I said, I really like working here. They were not the problem. It's not like I had a bad yeah, job, yeah. you know, course, <laughs> getting yeah, bullied yeah. or anything. But I sat down with them and said, I really feel like I need to to work my, my own. I do my own thing basically, mm -hmm. and you know, they were really supportive. They said, you know, we, we, we believe in you. We know that you're, we, they even tried to up my pay. <laughs> they said, well, we'll yeah. keep you on. Like, but I said, yeah. it's not, it's not the money. Cause I know I can make far more 
mm-hmm. and also be more fulfilled doing what I think I'm, yeah. I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And so thank you very much, but you know, here's my week's X amount of weeks notice. I'll be leaving on this day. Mm-hmm. But what I will do before I leave is I'll train anyone you bring on board. So I did mm-hmm. that just mm-hmm. to sort of make sure I leave on, on good terms. Of course. Yeah. Um, so that was obsession for me just to answer your question. I got to a place where I'm at work and I'm, I've got an earphone in and I'm listening to like motivational videos or SMMA videos. Of course, yeah. Every time I'm in my car and I'm playing like SMMA podcasts, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like everywhere I would go, there would be SMMAs on my mind, SMMA yeah. agency, entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. um, self-development, everything like that. I started to be my, my main thought at the mm-hmm. forefront of my mind. So, so that's what I, I think you're hundred percent right. You have yeah. to be obsessed with it to some degree mm-hmm. in order to get to your goals and to, to get to a place where no matter what, I'm not giving up. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people give up. It's like, I, I saw someone say on a post one day, years back, I've reached out to a hundred companies and I've not got any clients yet. And people were like, literally like, have you done more than that? Because you're not expected yeah. to get a client with a hundred outreaches and stuff like that. So I had to be obsessed and tell myself, mm-hmm. I'm not going to stop no matter what. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah. You have to, you, you learn stuff along the way as well. It's like, if, if you do a hundred, okay, cool. Like that's not, if you don't get any clients, that's not a hundred wasted. It's like, okay, what data can you take away from that a hundred? Like, where's yeah. the issues, right? So it's like how, you know, it's like, okay, you, you do, you take actions and then you look at the data from that. Then you make adjustments until you, you get to a position where it makes sense. You know, it's like, okay, yeah. these numbers add up now. Like, you know, you know, you track your outreach, right? And you know, now that, like you said, if yeah. you do 12 outreach, or say 10 a day and you get two responses, you know that you, on average, with the way that you, you do things, you get about 20% response. So you can yeah. start to then reverse engineer that and be like, okay, cool. Like if I set up on average for every three responses, I set a meeting and every one in three close or something like, you can then yeah. start to reverse engineer and be like, well, if I want to have five new clients this month, on paper, I need to do this much outreach. And now, now it's like yeah. actually a scientific, like data-driven approach rather than just like, you know what? I've done a hundred. I'm just going to give up. It, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it and gets I, easy I think, to be there. Yeah. And I think one of the things I've done, because you know, you will hear people complaining about, oh, I've spending connects and connects and connects. So I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I'm very observative. Like I have, I have been with um, building the systems. Like mm-hmm. how can I find a pain point of, of clients or ha- like I have been with job posts, like how can I find the pain point of the prospect? Mm-hmm. So too, as an agency owner, I look at what, people are doing i would just be looking at what they're typing and just thinking to myself okay people are saying connects 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 what can i do so i would literally filter my searches instead of just wasting connects i would mm-hmm. do job posts where there have been um zero to five responses mm-hmm. job posts where there have been um clients who have actually paid money because you know you've got freelancers who are putting job posts looking for um other i mean agency owners looking for freelancers mm-hmm. so they, they're the ones who have spent zero I mean, not yeah. to say that maybe they, there aren't eight companies, but for the most part, I wouldn't want to be applying for, so I'm channeling my job posts specifically to particular mm-hmm. types of businesses. And I noticed that the proposals are helping that way because less people have proposed already. Um, the client has uh, paid one to nine or 10 plus people and so on and so forth. So these mm-hmm. are sort of my, my checklist and my filters yeah. that I use for, for my searches and it helps me a lot with the response rate. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, like at scale, I think when you've got yourself to like a few more clients and you've got some earnings on your profiles and stuff, you might be able to just be like, you know what, now I can get a VA in, I can get them to do yeah. all the outreach and we can stay a bit more broad and it can be fully automated. But like yeah. when you're first starting out, you need to do everything you can back to that yeah. obsession thing to just like look at the numbers, look where you you know, the best bang for your buck is both in terms yeah. of money and time. And how can you just go all in on that until you know, until you get results and, and you've done that, yeah. which is amazing. Um, but awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, last question mm-hmm. here is there's a lot of people who, um, you know, who are just starting their agency or looking to get their next clients and they're on the edge of joining the entrepreneur accelerator. So if anybody is in that position right now, what, what would you say to them? I would say why hesitate? Because, you know, some courses are out there charging a thousand five hundred or, you know, some mentorships are like nine hundred. But here you've got something that is literally the bar has been lowered. Mm-hmm. The entry point has been lowered for you to, to basically learn from the best. So why, why delay? Look at how many people have got their first clients. Like mentors have played a major role in, in my success and I'm so grateful. And thank you very much, Bradley, for all the help you've given like on that note. But um, I, I would urge people who are hesitating to, to spend a very low amount to join a mentorship program, you get 
direct help from him. You get, you know, um, a, t- a team to support you. You've got a proven track record as well of people who have started with zero clients and have been able to get their first client and also scale mm-hmm. um, beyond their first client. So why would you sit back and complain about not having a client when the help is available at a very, very, very cheap rate? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have to emphasize that because I remember the initial, the initial time I, I signed on, I was like, should I do it? Should I do? And I had to speak to myself, what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm debating whether I should sign on to something that's basically free. Yeah. You see what I mean? So, and then I just decided I'm going to do it. And two weeks later, I got my client. Mm-hmm. So it speaks that's for awesome. itself, really. The results speak for itself. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, man. I think that's a misconception. You know, people like, that's what I really need to try and draw home to you. It's like, people are like, Oh, is it it's super low cost? Is that it must be super low value. And everyone's super <laughs> surprised when they join in. I'm like, no, listen, the only reason it's so cheap isn't because there's no, nothing on it. It's just because I want to help as many people as possible. And I think that's like, Literally. sometimes I shoot myself in the foot by it because people are like, Oh my God, like if I knew it was more value, I would have joined before. So I have to try and do as yeah. much of a good job trying to tell people like, I, I was just on a cost is not low value. <laughs> <laughs> I was just on a call with someone actually, um, just one of the fellow people who fellow students who have joined mm-hmm. yesterday. We had like a two and a half hour call. And one of the things that came up is how much value they've received. Two of the guys um, that joined, how much value they've received from the entrepreneur accelerator like directly you speaking to them answering questions mm-hmm. they were mind blown that it's so cheap and i was saying to them same here that's what that's what i felt as well when i joined like i, I wasn't expecting that much input and it's consistent as well in mm-hmm. all areas from mindset to systems to contract to the contract to wall to um the strategies to it's like everything that you'll <laughs> find in the course and more Mm-hmm. within a very cheap mentorship program. So I don't see why someone would, would delay like getting awesome. out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you yeah. so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, so look, all your links to everything is going to be in the description. You know, you're just actually starting now. Uh, you've got an Instagram, right? And a YouTube channel. Yeah. And you're yeah. going to start documenting a bit more of your uh, progress and uh, yeah. obviously helping people, I'm assuming as well, how they can yeah. land their first client, stuff about SMA yeah. mindset. So um, you know, your YouTube link and Instagram and whatever you want me to put down there will be in the description. So I'm sure as well, what I'd love to do in, in maybe six months from now, let's do mm-hmm. another interview and let's see, you know, cause your goal is to get to six figures, right? And I'd love to help yeah. you get there. So let's, Thank you. you know, in let's say in six months or something, we'll do another interview anyway. It'd be cool to see you, to, to see your progress. But if people do want to keep up to date with you in the meantime, obviously like all your links will be down in the description as well really appreciate that thank you very much Bradley, and thank you for your humility like that's one of the things I've, I've noticed about you very humble down to earth approachable and willing to just help and it's it's authentic and i really appreciate that about you know i wish you all the best as well awesome thank you so much man that, that means a lot and uh, yeah thank you so much everybody for watching like i said all links will be in the description and uh yeah we'll see you again soon okay so there we have it i hope you found a bunch of value in this interview nana's story is pretty crazy and honestly we have success stories like this popping out of the entrepreneur accelerator pretty much every week i get messages like this every day from people landing meetings landing clients quitting their job and i'd love for you to be part of the community so if you are interested check out the top link of the description and then on a final note obviously july 1st is just around the corner you probably you may be watching this after july 1st and if you are be sure to grab yourself a copy of my brand new book smma accelerated the social media marketing blueprint link to that is in the description as well just a quick reminder as well all of nana's links will be in the description down below go and check him out follow his journey thanks again so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video